four, three, two, one, go. Hey guys, this is Ranchin here, bringing you all soccer commentary. This is going to be the winner's match in Group J of the 32. Hope they big file on myself, 2010 summer season. This is going to be on Polaris Rhapsody at the bottom right corner in red. We're going to have Hyuk at the upper left hand. In blue, we're going to have 4GG. So we're going to turn respectively. Um, I... Really, not until after I did the first set did I realize actually how tired I am after work. <laughs> so this is going to be the last one for today. I'm going to get the losers and final match out of the way tomorrow and maybe do some part of the next group, which we'll hopefully finish downloading by then. But uh, yeah, so just uh, I feel that often enough, you know, the quality of my casts go down as I'm more tired, so I don't want to risk it. Um... Uh, especially if some of the games are longer, like 20 minutes or longer, I don't want to risk it because as more tired I am, the more I'm like... <laughs> so instead I'd rather, you know, delay the commentary half a day and get it out better with me being all fresh and nice and awesome. So I'm going to finish this off and uh, just, yeah, chill out for half an hour and go to sleep or something like that. Some of that, not that it matters to you guys. So yeah, Hyuk versus for GG. Uh, Hyuk is pretty bad at versus Terran. Um, it's been one of his, the only re biggest reason why Hyuk doesn't go forward in tournaments is that he's, versus Terran is bad, and you need to be good in all matchups to win Star Leagues and get forward, forward in Star Leagues, and he also falls to, you know, good players for Jimmy, which is going for Rex, and I really think that this is for Gigi's best shot right here, you got in a fairly good group, I'm pretty sure I didn't predict him getting out of the group, that's what I think I remember, but, uh, well, he's in a very good opportunity right now to get out of this group. Hyuk, uh, not a big of an obstacle for him. He just has to play well uh, like he did the last game. You know, he was facing an interesting build from Hojo, but didn't panic, just relaxed. Did what was necessary, forced Hojo on the defensive, and then did, went for some aggression and did some damage. Ho uh, Hyuk on the opposite side going for a spawning pull. Alongside Extractor coming up. I think it was an over pull right there. Uh, or could it, actually, I think it was actually, never mind. I think it was a nine pull now that I think about it. I'm all confused. I'm sorry. Oh, don't know. No, overpull with extractor and a natural expo coming in right now as well. So he's gonna go for the fast extraction build. Not quite quite a 12 hatch. And this this is a two player map. So going for 12 hatch can be occasional risky. Although I still think quite a few zergs go take the risk occasionally. It's just that you rather go out and put under pressure. Make sure to pressure the turn opponent. There is a very large rush distance though. So we're gonna see what it has to go for. We're already on the way for Kyuk. So he's gonna. Probably try to go for two base Muta, I think. Might go for a lurker bus, though. I think the distances on the map are that long that a lurker bus might not be the best idea. Um, still think that this base can be dangerous for a turn player if it goes too far into the late game. Turn player can live off two bases very long, but getting that third gas going is going to be significantly difficult for GG there. This is showing this for person move way too long. For GG doing a good job of keeping that SCV alive. Hyuk not quite managing to catch it there. Look at him micro that stuff around. Finally getting a bit of surround, getting a few hits, forcing that SCV out into the Natrix ball. I think though for GG, saw most of the things that he seemed to need to see, but seriously guys, 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 can I please have normal, oh thank you God. Factory now up, and is he gonna put down a starport? Is he gonna go for a quick starport here? Doesn't seem like he's gonna go for it yet. Yeah. Okay, no, second factory. This is very interesting. Gonna go into a mech build here. Two very quick factories. We're going to see what he actually tries to go for heavy vultures. Armory up, never mind. Goliaths are going to be coming out. I'm still looking for that two factory vulture strategy that I want to see one of these. Zergling. Oh my god, that is. Hyuk just got in an amazingly important Zergling in there. Spotting out the two factories. Didn't spot the armory, I believe, but definitely spotted the two factories. Sunken Colony coming up, so he's definitely ready for possible sunken. He doesn't know other vultures are going to be coming at him. I mean, he's ready for vulture harassment, which might be coming out, might not. Does look like a, for GG actually getting himself ready for uh, anti muta rather than anything else. We're gonna see whether he actually tries to get weapons one and just roll over uh, Hyuk with just a mech army. Uh, we're gonna see actually how long this game goes on. Once I can call that the front Hyuk is gonna stay nice on these two bases, spire about halfway done. So we're gonna be seeing some mutas out there. Is Hyuk gonna manage to bypass heavy amounts of Goliaths? Probably see 4 gg put down an eBay. I think it would actually be a good idea to put down some turrets as well. Help protect alongside those Goliaths on the ground. Because just Goliaths are more maneuverable, but you need some more. You definitely need carry on boosters. And I did see a Vulture out there. 4 gg is going to use that more as a scout than anything else. 
not really going to be able to accomplish much else. Is good working on weapons one is armory, so definitely, yeah, going to really help him out to get those mutas. Goliaths with weapons one and Charon boosters are so, so deadly. Really rip through those mutalists like crazy. But just turrets, you know, some stat uh, a few static defenses, also a good idea, I feel. Although it doesn't, eBay doesn't seem to be anywhere in sight. Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, Vulture out there at the front just going to spot the additional hatchery coming up. Not much else mood is going to be popping into. So I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think there's going to be enough Goliaths out there uh, to fight back. We're going to be seeing five, six mutas at the start. Four to six Goliaths, more than enough to fight this back, I think. Especially if Charon Booster is hit. And I think he's going to have six Goliaths. They're ready to defend. And if Charon Booster is hit, he's going to be in good position. And the only th real problem for 4 g is going to be to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't get trapped. That the mutas don't have easy time. Uh, he is only staying on one base right now, so he's going to be f having, finding himself fairly t fairly easy time defending this. If he, he, if he had his natural expansion coming up, it would be a little bit more diffi difficult. The uh, Mutalist would have a lot more room to fly in between and such. Barracks Mutalist going to get folded off. The Mutalist is going to go in there, try to do some, but I'm not quite sure how successful they're going to be against, against the Goliaths. Might manage to get some nice hits in. Going to attack some of the SCVs. Going to go in there. I don't even think he got a single SCV kill. And then just run away. Fuji actually also pushing out with some of these guys. Just now Karen Booster's kicking in. Go and pick off an overlord right there. Goodbye. Good night. Only a few guys back home. But enough to deal with these Mutos. Just that those Karen Boosters being a huge advantage right now especially with those high ridges the mutos being forced to fly and that glass just get a lot of maneuverability managed to get their shots off early spot the mutos coming in and only two ways for him to fly in so for gg has enough reaction time as long as he know you know knows where they're coming from he's gonna be in a good position vulture is just flying around right now acting as a spotter no mines or anything of the sort so not managing to spot mines to give him a spotter there but mutos picking that off gonna see whether for gg actually gonna start expanding soon enough has a lot of glass out there one marine as well and already passing his own bridge, gonna go into the middle, just gonna kick, uh, kick some zerglings in the teeth and kill it right there. And walking by piecemeal with Goliaths, has to be careful. Goliaths are vulnerable against Mutas when they're not grouped up together. Another sunken colony gonna come up, so and another, so definitely gonna force Hick to put down sunken colonies. Not quite sure if Fujiji actually gonna go for the full frontal attack with this, but he's definitely gonna be able to put on some pressure. He has to ma just make sure that he doesn't separate his Goliaths too much. Also gonna be expanding commands that are also gonna come up. But as long as he doesn't split up his Goliaths too much, attacks him once again. He might actually go for this right now before the second colonies manage to morph in, although I don't think he's gonna go for this. Good. The Mutalists will be able to go. If he manages to break the front, I think the Mutalists with the second colonies will be enough to maybe fight him back. So he doesn't want to play too risky. Getting a lot of Goliaths has weapons one now, so those Mutalists are gonna be toast if they engage. Uh, can't see whether it's spinning anymore, actually. But he might mm, be working on continuous upgrades. Mutal's gonna go in there. Gonna no, just gonna narrow the command center. Just gonna go in this CV line. CV line looking a lot more vulnerable than it was earlier. Only a few guys here to defend that this time. Mutal is gonna be able to engage them. 4GG doing some focus firing on those Mutas, but losing all of his Goliaths. Only four, a few more Goliaths coming in from those. And finally, some of his forces that were aggressing earlier now gonna <laughs> just run away. Samus, if he's going to the Natural Expo, to start mining there. One Goliath there to defend, a couple Goliaths there to defend, actually, as well. So the Mutas gonna be forced back. But Hyuk now has a fairly large number, even more Mutas coming out there. So he's going very heavy on the Mutas. And uh, also some Rookies on the ground. Carapace upgrade on the Muta, very necessary <laughs> against those Goliaths. And some Jorgens on the ground. So if he mixes those two together, he might actually manage to fight back these Goliaths. But he has to make sure, uh, you know, the Zerglings have to... Either the Zerglings have to do the damage while the Goliaths are extract, uh, distracted with the Mutas or the other way around. For Gigi getting his third factory up, going to see his fourth and five on the way very soon now. Just as Natural Expo kicks in, his refinery gonna second refinery going to come up as well. And he's just going to, I assume, continue massing up Goliaths right now. Probably going to transition to some tanks as well as, as the game goes on. Because tanks, well-upgraded tanks... And Goliath armies against Zerg, despite the lack of maneuverability, can do a lot of damage. For GG critically spotting the third base coming up there for Hyuk. Hyuk picking up his, uh, Hyuk. Hyuk picking up his 3 o'clock. And going to lose that SCV, but, you know, getting that information back to base, very important. Also repairing some of his Goliaths, making sure that they're, you know, keeping, keeping good on his investment. Only one machine shop, so yeah, it was the only thing. He just got Karen Booster. Still don't, still can't tell what the army is actually spinning because of the headboard thing. Uh, kind of in the way. Let's see. Look about a control group of Zerglings, I'd say. A little, okay, a little more, actually. Two control groups of Zerglings, then a bunch of Mutas. So we're going to see what they actually tries to go for a full frontal attack. If it might actually be exactly what he's going for. A lot of Zerglings, a lot of Mutas. Go for this at the front, hoping that a two pronged attack is enough to pick off this glass. And it might be that Barracks critically uh, 
blockading there for Fujiji, but this is going to be full on attack. Zergen's coming in as well. A lot of Goliaths are going to be forced to fight back. Some of the Zergen's are going to try to get through. Some are attacking the barracks. So, uh, Hyuk, unfortunately, A clicking there, but losing a lot of his Goliaths. Not enough. Those Mutalists in way too large a number. Hyuk looks like he's going to come ahead in this, doing a huge attack. Still, some Goliaths back there. Still 